here. Uh, so I have my own personal account on here uh, just so that we can make use of that. So I can show you exactly what's going on. So I'm going to present from that screen essentially what Chrome Remote Desktop is. Let me give a quick overview of what Chrome Remote Desktop is. Uh, it is a way for us or for either you to take control of somebody else's screen or you to give control to somebody of your computer. So they get control of the mouse, the keyboard, everything. You can stop that at any point. You can grab the mouse and take back control or they can do it on their end or they can stop sharing. But it's essentially uh, screen sharing uh, plus. It's screen sharing with some extra additions on here. So we'll get started right away. And I'm gonna jump on over here and share my screen from this one. All right, perfect. So to get here, we actually, uh, we push out on, on Palliser computers, we push out the extension. And so all of you should have this extension up here. But if you don't, you just come to the remote desktop. So like anything else with Google, remote desktop is remotedesktop.google.com. So the secret is figure out what you wanna do, where you wanna go, and then put .google.com. It's gonna bring you to this screen that looks like this. And we're going to go to the remote remote support. And we're going to get support. So what this will do for us, this is going to install the extension. Now, the only person that needs the extension is the person that is going to give access to their computer. So if you're not going to give access to your computer, or if your student is not going to give access to your computer, they don't need this extension ex installed. They can just go straight from the desktop. And then you see up here, this extension right here, it looks like a little, a couple tabs, one on top of each other, one with a little Chrome extension in it is how we uh, we jump in and we, that's the extension that we need. So, so once we have that done, that's the starting point. Now we're gonna think of what we wanna do. So again, this computer that I'm sharing is gonna be the one that's giving control and the computer that I'm on, which we'll jump to in just a second, is gonna be the one that I'm taking control. So the way that we do this is by generating a code. So let's say for example, we have something set up on our end and we wanna give control to our students to take advantage of this. So on our teacher computer, we're gonna generate a code. On the access computer, we're gonna to go to the exact same location and I'm gonna stop sharing on this screen and I will share on my screen now. So this would now be the student screen because we wanna give control to the student. We're gonna get the student to go to the same location. So they can click on the extension and it will open it up there and they're gonna enter in that access code. The access code is only available for about five minutes. So you can't set this up ahead of time. You can't preload all of these and get them all ready and then just start unloading them on the students. You gotta do it on the fly. So I'm gonna enter in the access code here. 3010-6111. It's a 12 digit code. We hit connect. What's gonna happen now is a message is gonna pop up on the other screen. So this is the one that I am, uh, this is the one that I'm giving access to. So remember, I'm taking access as a student and I'm giving access as a teacher. So it should just take a second here. And it says, would you like to allow Jason Kwasney at palacersd.eb.ca to see and control your computer? And I'm gonna click share. And what happens now is this background, this computer you'll see is the student computer. So, oh, sorry, excuse me. I'm on the student computer. I am the student taking control. And over here, the one with the get support 
the one that is giving control is the teacher computer. So if I was a teacher, I would go to the math learning center. And I'm gonna pop into one of these apps as a teacher. Let's say, let's just grab the number frames one here. You have the insurance, you don't have the registration. How did you lose that? Just gonna just check your mics if you wouldn't mind. Uh, we'll just I, I got it here. I'll mute it on this end. You have both? There we go. Um, so I'm seeing the student as a again. This one's as a teacher. We're gonna open the web app and we're gonna set up an activity for those students to do. So we're gonna bring in once we load up here. I'm gonna bring in a you know, a 10 frame. And now I'm gonna ask the student. So now as a teacher, I'm gonna take my hands off the computer and I'm gonna to say to the student, I need you to fill this in. And it's difficult to see if you kind of, I mean, my head's going back and forth here, but now I've taken over on the controlling computer. So now would be the student that says, okay, I want you to demonstrate five plus two to me. So they're gonna bring out the five frame and then they're gonna bring out you know, maybe two ones or something like that. And they're gonna say, okay, five plus two, and now I'm gonna get you to count it. So really, this is ideal for one-on-one -on -one sessions or sessions where we can't work collaboratively. Sessions where we don't have the software that allows us both to work in the same document or something like that at the same time, but we wanna give some control over. One-on-one -on -one is ideal for this. And we have total control here. So again, I am controlling as a student, I can grab the text, and I can start to write, this is my answer. Uh, again, we could do this talking, so we can do this through a phone session um, with a control on here. We can do it through a meet like we're doing right now, just for audio and not necessarily video and, and see what's happening. Um, the other thing I want you to be aware of is, again, I'm on the student machine. That's the one who is taking control. I can jump in anywhere inside of here so i could jump into the meet and i could close it and cancel that out i could jump in and start taking over and say well i want to go see what's in the mail right and i could jump into the mail so one of the things you see down in the bottom corner you have that you're sharing your screen if i jump back to the computer screen and i hit stop it kicks me back as a student because I was on the teacher screen, it kicks, kicks me back to the remote desktop. So it cuts off control for that screen. So I'm gonna come back here. I know that I was going back and forth with this is a student screen, this is a teacher screen and stuff like that. But essentially you give access on one screen and the, the user on the other end is gonna take that access and they're gonna start working on it. So it's fairly straightforward the uh, the the way that you do this is open up remote desktop, generate the code and share the code. How would I share the code? If it was me, I would grab the link. And so maybe in my chat window here, I would say, okay, students, here's the link, right? And I'm gonna, you know, look there. Shelly was the first one here. So Shelly, I'm gonna get you to go to that screen. And then I'm gonna, on my end, I'm gonna generate a code and I'm going to copy that code and I'm gonna say, okay, Shelly, there is the code that you're going to need. So you're gonna copy and paste that. You're gonna to go to the give support and uh, you're gonna copy and paste that code in here and it's gonna kick you over and you're gonna, I'm gonna get a pop-up shortly here that says you want control of this. And maybe. Maybe Shelly doesn't want that. So in that case, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction so I can share this with you because I wanna show you something else. Maybe Shelly just left. <laughs> oh, she's here, she just doesn't wanna play. It's all right, well, I'm gonna take over here. You shouldn't actually need the extension unless you're going to get support. So I'm that's all right. I'm going to jump in. You can try and access that again. I use that access code, so none of you would be able to make use of it now. 
And I'm also going to show you a shortcut way to make it so it's a one click for your students. So you don't have to do the here's the link, here's the code. We'll do a one click. It's a little bit more work on your end. I'll show you how to set it up, but it makes it a lot easier. I'm just waiting for the, the share link to come through. Does this work on any machine? Sure, as long as the student is running the Chrome browser. Has to be the Chrome browser. That's right, Steve, yeah. Um, it, it is a Chrome extension, so it has to be within the Chrome browser. So I worked. I'm not sure what that means, but it worked. You were able to access mine? Oh, the remote computer is offline. Please verify that it's turned on. I'm going to try one more time here and connect. It is turned on. Unless Shelly stole my code. It's not, again, um, we're taking over access. This is not instantaneous. It works fairly good once that connection's made. Um, but it does have to go through some some different uh, services here. So it does sometimes take a little bit of time to request that access and everything. And it could be because we're running uh, a meet. Actually, I've run this with meets before and haven't run into this issue. So let's try again. Let's cancel that. We'll cancel on this end. I'm gonna generate a new code and enter it in here by hand because i want to show you what happens uh if you have multiple screens um, because i know a lot of our chromebooks now on chrome boxes have multiple screens and so we don't necessarily we want to be able to talk the user through how what to do if multiple screens show up so here we go now i'm seeing it they want to access my computer and I'm going to share my screen from here. Perfect. So in this case, and something that you didn't see before is over on the right hand side, there's a little blue pop up window here. And inside that pop up window, if it just has one screen, uh, it, it shouldn't, I mean, this one for some reason defaulted to my main screen. It should actually be showing both my screens, but inside of this window, you're able to show all of the screens. And I don't know why it's not recognizing the other one. Maybe it's because it's a Chromebook and it knows, or maybe I only gave it access to one screen, but Regardless, if you have multiple screens, you're going to come inside here and there's going to be some settings. There's also some additional settings that you can turn on and turn off in here. Um, nothing that I would say that you really want to take a look at too, too much. Uh, but just so you're aware, there's some additional settings inside of here. That's what this blue arrow is. All right, so I'm going to stop this on mine. Stop sharing. and You'll see that it disconnects right away. Perfect. And then we're going to pop back here and I'm going to show you the secret to how to make it work. How to make it work without uh, adding with, with one click. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. And it's actually fairly straightforward. When you go to your Chrome remote desktop, you're gonna grab this link, but we only actually need, well, we're gonna grab the whole link, sorry. We're gonna go back to our, our Meet or wherever we wanna post it. We're not gonna post this message yet. We're just gonna post up until there. Then we're gonna go back into our remote desktop and we're gonna generate our code. We're gonna copy that code. And inside of our Meet, we have the HTTPS colon backslash remote desktop.google.com slash support. We're going to punch in there session. 
And then we're going to paste that code that we just put in there. So essentially what we're saying is go to the remote desktop, open a session, and here's the code that you're going to use. So we're going to try this again, Shelly. What I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to click on that link. Not enter in any information, just click directly on that link. And hopefully if everything works out well, we're going to see a notice that says, Shelly wants to take control of my screen. Maybe not. Is Shelly still there? I'm going to blame Shelly's internet. Shelly's at home. Um, Nothing. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop that code. I'm gonna cancel that one. We're gonna generate a new one here. I have great internet. I'm gonna post that in there. Let's try one more time, Shelly. Oops. You know what? I uh, That's not gonna work because that's not actually a... Don't copy and paste yet. No, no, no. This is, we're trying to set this up so our students can do it. So I just want you to click on that link. I don't want you to copy and paste. Just click on the latest link that I posted in there. The idea is, can we make it as simple as possible for our students to enter? Now, again, I, I understand that we have to have a certain level of comfort here with regards to, are we willing to let our students take control of our screen? Trust me when I say we can take that back. We're not gonna give control and just walk away. We can stop that and we can take that back at any point, coming back to our remote desktop and, and just turning it off. Um, but are we willing to give that to them. If not, then we have to be willing to get them to trust us to take control so we can do the same session and just ask for control from them. So I wonder if it's because, let me try this. If I stop sharing, try it again, Shelly. Close that, close your uh, Chrome remote desktop and click on that link one more time for me. I wonder if it's because I was sharing my screen already. That's one of these things, right? When you need it to work, it doesn't necessarily. Spinning some more. <laughs> There's a dizzy joke in there somewhere that uh, beyond what you just made, but I'm gonna leave that one alone. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, I will, uh, I'll hit pause on that one. We'll hit pause on trying to make that work. Uh, I've tried it, it does work. I suggest trying it on your own before you go live in front of the classes. Uh, and it might, you know what, you might get the same thing that I just got, which is it didn't work for us, but, uh, and it might be because I'm trying to open too many sessions at once, uh, but this will work. I can share with you uh, the information I will, uh, I will send out an email with with kind of the short code, but remember, all you got to do is remote desktop.com or .google.com slash support, which is the URL you go to, and then just add in session, S-E-S-S-I-O-N slash the code, and it should work. So we'll cancel it. I'll take away Shelly's ability to take control of my screen. And uh, I'm going to stop there. Questions. I know that there's something that I missed. It, it's it's really how we put it into play, how you guys want to put it into play, what comfort level you have uh, giving access to um, the students with regards to your computer or asking them to take it. But I mean, what could we do with this? What do you guys see? Or what questions do you have?
I think this will be really good for uh, doing some troubleshooting with students. Um, oftentimes it's like they try to explain and you just have absolutely no clue as to what they're actually trying to say and what problem they're actually having. So this, you could actually go in and do more of a troubleshooting basis probably, Jason. Yeah, I agree, Steve. I, I find that I try not to, uh, I, I use this with teachers sometimes in doing the troubleshooting as well. Um, and I try not to take over because I, I want them to learn as well. But there's this a point of frustration when you're like, look, I just need to take over the mouse. I just need to do this to get life going. And, and this is a this is a way that you can get that going. So um, for sure. I think that uh, for a a one on one session, this this and we showed this to the EA. Some of the EAs were a little bit excited early on about this. I think that this potentially could be uh, really effective with a one on one where you don't have to worry about other kids. So if a student wanted to take access of their machine, wanted us to take actions of their machine, they would need to do the same thing as you were. Yes. Yeah. Essentially, if, if we wanted to take uh, control of a student machine, um, they would need to go to that support link, generate the code, and then share the code with us. So I and it's it's a simple one to do. Uh, it could be in a in a hangout message on the back end that that goes back and forth. So it isn't a publicly shared code like this. Um, that would probably be the easiest way if you were just going one on one in a group session and having a student share one. Uh, but it's ideal for just one on one individuals. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it could be a cool tool depending on how we put it into play. Uh, and I don't, I don't think that there's too much more I can teach you with regards to uh, to what it is. I, I I will obviously stick around and answer questions if you have like individual or specific use scenarios. But other than that, I don't have much else to share. I look down my notes. You will see on if you go to that support page, there's also a remote access. That is only available if the computer you're remotely accessing is a uh, a Windows, Mac, or Linux machine. And uh, you have to download a little bit of software on there. But essentially, if you have a desktop at school that you wanted to access at home that you knew was always on and always running, you could set it up so that you can remote into that machine and then operate that machine from school. It is not, I would say, the, the best of scenarios. Um, but if for some reason you absolutely needed to get into it, that's a way that you could get into that machine. But um, yeah, I, I checked out my notes here and, and I think I got everything. Uh, do you guys have the links that you need? Did, did everybody get the link to be able to create it and give it a try? I, I suggest trying that with a friend, a peer or something like that, a colleague at work uh, remotely and, and give it a go. But other than that, um, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Uh, got some more on for next week. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions about this, fire my way. So. Keep up the great work, Jason. Thanks for this. Thank you, Steve. Okay, thank you. You bet, Renee. Perfect. Hey, Jason, I kind of jumped in here a little bit late, but uh, I'll just okay, go yeah. back and I'll watch the video. Did you want to? I mean, well, we could stop the recording now if you want to. If you want to 